Welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Digital Goats Academy. Guys, if you're just now tuning in, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button on the way in or out, depending on how you guys feel, man. But welcome to my class today. What we're going to go over today is um, chart reading. That's our topic for today. So again, um, just a reminder, guys, hit that subscribe button on the way in and out and enjoy yourselves, guys. Oh, I forgot to say I am the host, the digital goat. I'm not even sure if I said that, guys, but um, yeah, let's get into it, yo. What's going on, bro? So yeah, like I said, viewers, our topic today is just chart reading. <clears throat> what I just want to do is just kind of go over some, what I believe to be some simplistic things on analyzing a chart not necessarily looking for a setup, but more so of identifying things that can put you not necessarily all the time on the right side of the market, but knowing that we're going to be prone to failure anyway, right? Now we're going to take uh, losses anyway for you guys to be able to have a potential recovery or, or, or a setup that you weren't expecting because you had already factored that in ahead of time. You know what I'm saying? You're not always going to be right in the market, but you can have parameters that you set that I at least allow you if say, you know, you had a losing trade because you were just too gun ho Well, we came down or up to, um, you know, an area that you were expecting in the market and that's the better entry. You know what I'm saying? Because most of the times, like we're, we're a little bit aggressive in the, in the chart reading sense, guys, as far as like when we're entering the market. So you want to just kind of have some ways to identify, okay, this could have been an area that the market could potentially come down, but what, price action is showing me that the market is going to continue up, you know what I'm saying? And then news jumps in, all of a sudden it tanks down to that area that you're looking for. You're like, ah, but again, if you identify it, knowing that there's a possibility of price doing either or, because you're not going to be like a wizard in this, guys, you can either go at a lower lot size, or if you are in profit, you know that, okay, this might not be the big move to take me 100 pips, 1,000 pips, 50 pips, whatever the case may be. Can you hear me, bro? Yeah, I hear you, bro. I'm at work right now, so. Oh, okay, I'm okay. Looking. You good. You, you, you know I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> you good. You know for I'm sure, in. For sure. I'm waiting to snipe so, some. All right, bet. So let's actually go over Euro USD and use that. I'm actually going to scrap my protocol, all my stuff. Now, this would have been a, well, just looking at it, guys, this is a perfect example of me identifying areas that the market could potentially return to. Now, obviously, this is a, this is a gigantic move if the market did decide to push all the way up there, right? That's about... 360 pips. But if you guys see, I pretty much identified a potential area that the market could rise to um, based off of Fibonacci. And I think that was like on a monthly time frame or something like that. Possibly. Yeah, more than likely. Let me let me actually use this to see. I just want to validate it. I think I captured it from here. Yep, right there on the money. So that's what I was looking at. I was looking at this entire move. And the reason why I identified the 618 is because obviously there's a possibility that the market could decide to rise there if it chose to, right? So, you know, that's just kind of giving you guys an example. Let's just go into, you know, identifying areas where we may expect, not to confuse yourself, but more so, is there a possibility that based off the news, based off the reaction the market has given us, is it a possibility for it to climb higher? And the same could be true if we were looking at it to sell, vice versa, whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna just clean my chart. How do I clean it over here? Where we at? Hmm, I'm on my we iPad. We're waiting for some aggressive so. moves for tomorrow too, aren't we? Right, right, right. No, for sure. Okay. But that doesn't mean that we can't get price action results here. But like I said, today's more so of us just identifying potential areas. Where is, why am I so confused about this? It's on my iPad. 
I guess they don't have a trash can button. Oh, whatever. Just have to delete it. So, okay, Euro USD. We look at it on the 12 month time frame. So, basically, the year. What we're seeing now is um, pretty much price as far as the data is showing us, because obviously there's more data that we can't see. It's either based off this broker or it's just based off of trading view having up until that point, right? So 2002 is where the euro rise. Coincidence? Absolutely not. What happened in 2001? 9-11, uh, right? 9-11 brought the market up slightly just before it crashed at the end of the year. So between September and December, the dollar, we're talking about the dollar, the dollar was bullish. And um, by the time it hit December, it started getting bearish, which drove the United States into a recession. Well, if you're trading against the United States, uh, that was very a very successful, uh, let's say, one, two, three, four. Uh, we'll count that six. So six to seven years that the euro was strong, right? Makes sense. The euro was strong for six to seven years. And what we're looking at right here is potential corrections. Now, we don't have data over here. If you guys see the earliest data we have is 2002. So we don't have data from like the 90s, 60s. You know, there's data as far as a... Uh, uh, back in the day, but again, it just has to go of what, when technology started picking it up. So we can see that if you just change it to a line chart, right? We can see that for a fact it's been bullish and now it's at its correction phase. So the lowest points that we have for the Euro, Euro USD, excuse me, this is Euro USD. The lowest point that we have for Euro USD is down here. And this is where it's true support is at, right? It's true support on the yearly time frame, right? The yearly time frame. So we know that we're at support potentially. We don't know that if we're done with support, right? Now, obviously, mm -hmm. I got to do a top down analysis because it's just, I can't not talk about this without going through the regular uh, uh, fundamentals of trading. So we look right here. Man, dude, I'm in my, um, I'm in my, uh, uh, what do you call this? The computer room for my place, for my apartment complex. Man, somebody was in here drinking hard, yo. I left that, <laughs> left the room in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's strong too. Like I gotta get up. What you here, mean? Like, right now. Yeah, it's like it's like either some strong beer or some hard liquor that oh, nobody probably that's ever the drinks. Worst. So. Yeah, man. Right, that's like, the worst. It, it, it gives it's giving me the feeling of like scotch. My brother's dad used to drink scotch. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, <laughs> you're right, That's bro. Crazy. So, it's, <laughs> so we look Damn. right here from 2013. Man, and I, I had needed this info in 2013. So we look right here, 2013, the Euro, Euro USD collapsed, right? Mm -hmm. Or just sold down, however you want to explain it. Came back up to create what? Resistance. So we only have this data, but if we see, if we just look at it, because we can't factor in this saying that it's true support because this is the only info we have, but we don't know if they're, because I don't have anything from like the 90s or the 80s or the 70s. I don't know if there's any area, which I know it probably came from a low point, but the market could be attracted to an even lower point. And the reason why I identified um, resistance right here is because if we just look at it, on the higher time frame, it broke out of this low and then it popped back up to this the previous test. low right here. Right. So this previous low right here. So we can identify that, okay, it did break structure and it validated that structure by doing what? By creating resistance. How do we know it's resistance? Well, price has to touch the two points at least at a bare minimum. And this is on a 12 month time frame. So if you don't expect this to be resistance, I don't know what to tell you, right? But this is resistance right. on a 12 month time frame. So I have to objectively look at the market being bearish. You know what I'm saying? Off a 12 month mm -hmm. time frame. Now, my notion may be different 
because I start scaling down on a smaller time frame. So let's see if we can go, let's do three months instead of six months. Yeah. All right, three months, right? So if you look right. at it, price did they drop are. lower. Price did drop low and did the same thing. Where are we at now? Yeah. A previous yeah. low. Add into a pre into an uh, older high. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. But what we gotta respect, what we gotta respect right here is once I clean this up. Let me see. Bear with me, guys. Like I said, I'm on my iPad. I'm having to work on the iPad for various reasons. So off of the three month time frame. Price is currently at its previous low that it made on the three month time frame. So it's at the low that it made in 2019 with the possibility of it rising higher. I definitely can see that. Well, let's see based off of FIBS where we're at currently. Now, this is based off of my FIB um, parameters, guys. Some people have different ones, but I do feel like the ones I use are pretty basic and at the core anybody can use. But if you know somebody else that uses the 8.8, eight, I know people use the 8.8 eight, eight. Um, instead of 23. I know some people use 25. You can even be generic and do 25, 50, 75. I like to be as accurate as possible. So even if you do it from the, you know, 0, 25, 50, make sure you put a 618 in there. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, 786 seven, and 618 are pretty good zones that I, I think everybody should have. But again, it just depends on who you are as a trader. If you don't need that level of accuracy, then by all means, 25, 50, 75, 100. That's just too much spacing for me to, you know, I, especially the way I use FIBS. But this ain't a FIBS class, so I just wanted to kind of emphasize that. Let me make sure I get the true reading because I do factor in wicks. Now, the purpose of me using the FIB was to see where I was currently um, with the whole downtrend for EURUSD. So if you see right here, EURUSD has been on a downtrend, right? So 50% mm -hmm. it is currently at. Well, what do we know about 50%? Well, we know that the market retraces 38 to 50% to continue in its direction, right? Again, on a 12 month time frame, we have to believe that the Euro, Euro USD is bullish. Um, just, just, off the, just off of the respect of the fundamentals until it proves us otherwise. Now, here's where we identify potential, here's where we can identify potential areas that the market may return to. Now, I did have it as a line chart, right? And I'm always being uh -huh. open-minded to this because we don't know that if the market is going to play to what we like, we don't know if the market's going to pop back up higher, shoot down lower. We just don't know. We do the best we can by the parameters we're given, by looking at price action, by using indicators. I'm more of a naked trader, but using indicators, things to help assist us in you know, making our bias true, right? So this is where I get into what I want to identify to say like, okay, here's the possibility, right? The possibility is that because we haven't reached there, this is the possibility. Let's see, where is my... So the possibility is that you have to identify areas of previous lows, previous highs. Too many traders get caught with their pants down because they're ignoring the laws because now that they're in profit, I just lose all train of thought of how to trade. You know what I'm saying? I, I forget that there's rules to this, right? Well, here we have up here is that I just told you guys that price retests what? 38 to 50%. But that's also in conjunction with previous lows and previous highs, yo. So you don't know if this is the previous low that price wants to uh, respect and then start pulling down from there. But because what if price starts shooting up here? That's the most, technically, that's the most previous low. But if we're factoring into a higher time frame, this is the most consistent low. But could I see the possibility of price rising up here? Absolutely. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize, guys, that if you spot these areas, even if you say you take a loss or say you make money and then the market starts showing you otherwise, right? Well, you've already set that, man, this market could be heading towards there. And you could be the person that's like, you know what, I'm going to buy all the way up to this position, 
or because it looks like it's heading out of there. If I'm the scalper, what I'm going to do is, um, like I said, buy, you know, in increments all the way up to the zone until I see opportunity for set for sales. Right. And again, you're playing that based off of price action. So this is off the three month time frame. Now let's scale down again, not using the fib because we know that that's a seven, eight, six reversal zone and six, one, eight is, oh snap. And six, one, eight is slightly, uh, I thought I turned my thing on. And six, one, eight is just slightly above our 50%. Uh, where are we? I meant to do this earlier. All right. Can you still see my screen? Uh, yeah. All right, cool. All right, so three month time frame. Let me scale down to uh, let me do a two week time frame, right? Two week time frame. We have hit what? Now, now let's say we know this is our zone, right? Let's make it actually shallow. We know that this is our zone potentially for um, a higher time frame, previous no, low, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I do the same thing. If you're confused about the line, uh, 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 the line. I mean, if you're confused with the candlesticks, turn it to a line chart. Same thing over here. We do rinse and repeat, right? And all you're doing is just identifying areas that the market could potentially head towards. This is a previous low over here. Got it. Let me turn that black. Previous low right there. So if the market decided to push back into this area, then fall down from there, it's no surprise to me because I'm identifying. Now I'm not saying this to confuse you guys. What I'm saying is that I'm just identifying areas that the market could either reject, possibly jumping towards. Well, it looked like it tried to push up there. If you guys see, like if we extended the zone, it looked like it tried to push up there, but it was like, uh, I'm not feeling that. This is as high as I go. So now we have this blank area where price is basically filled in with wicks. So I could see price wanting to attack this later, but it just depends on what price action is doing. Right now, we're currently at a good zone for this market to potentially be selling. Be selling either back to this low or break it to continue um, to the ups. I mean, break it or continue to the downside. So I'm more lenient on, uh, um, I'm more leaning towards the sell because one, we are at a, a, a level of consolidation, which I would like to see if it comes to the top of the zone, which I identified. Again, it's a two week time frame, but the market's just not going to give it to you like that. We have a level of resistance right here. You don't believe me? Break it down even further. And if you guys see, you all see the market is steadily trying to, it's trying to break this level, but it's having some difficulties, right? Wick, wick. Wick over here, break it down even further. Now we see candles, right? Now we see candles. So the market broke out of this level very aggressively. This is a this is a daily chart, right? Daily time frame chart. So from this level, the market shot down 498 pips, right? Can you can you uh mute your your uh, do you want oh, to talk you me? real quick? My bad, bro. Yeah, I can hear it all that in the back. You good, you good. <laughs> um, so the market dropped down 400, almost 500 pips at this support level, pushed back up a little bit higher. But here's where people lose their minds. They still forget that this is resistance, right? This is, in fact, resistance. But we have to wait to see what the market is showing us unless you're, you know, just a little bit more aggressive than everybody else wait for the market to show us a move, show us its hand, which I do believe it's been showing us its hand before we make a decision to potentially sell. Now, this to me was the break and retest that should bring this market down. But the only thing is, is that we haven't had like a slight push up. I would definitely like to see like a 23 or 38% to bring this market down, if not 100%. So let's just draw draw a fib on it to see where I would like to be at.
Mm, it shot up to that area. I could definitely see it rising a little bit higher. Again, scaling down. So if you guys look, man, you see how I'm giving, I'm giving myself opportunities to either buy or sell. Not saying that I'm trying to confuse the bias. I already told you guys my bias is to sell unless proven otherwise, right? But because if my bias is wrong and it breaks this level, all I would have to do, well, I probably wouldn't wait for that because it's a daily time frame. But say it broke this level and I didn't get in and I'm still waiting for confirmation. Well, once, once that would happen, let me find my thing. If that were to happen, obviously the move would be strong and I would wait for it to come back in. Well, I would more likely catch the buy up, right? I would wait for it to come back in, knowing that it'll give me another opportunity to buy, probably at a lower level or probably won't be this level at a lower level and then take the buy up. But I'm setting myself up for success because if I didn't look in the future, you know what I'm saying? Well, I guess really this is looking in the past. If I didn't look in the past to identify some of these areas, I would be over here lost if it started buying up, right? I wouldn't find a position to get in because my whole premise would be that I'm selling and I didn't identify areas that the market could potentially buy up to, right? So if you just look at that, let's see how many pips that would be. And obviously I'm not saying that it'll make a move from here if it were to buy up. Wow, just that is 700 pips. Yeah, a thousand pips there, a thousand pips of that move. Definitely don't think that um, we're making a move to buy up anytime soon. I think, again, follow the pathway that the market has been showing you. There's a reason why I identified what I did is because if you look at this, guys, this is resistance all the way through. This once support, this once support has now turned into resistance, right? And I'm talking about over here, right? This was once support, broke that area, turned into resistance, like, oh, I'm not feeling you anymore. And we have potentially, well, here we go right here. We have true support down here. So we're respected. And that is the only data we have is from May 2002, right? So this is true support down here, but we haven't had a level that says I'm ready to buy. I don't think that we're ready to buy. Why? Is because the same way we saw this, the same way we saw this, break, retest, market drops, we need to see the same thing from this market on the buying side, all right? Now, the momentum is has been super strong to the upside, all right? But the only thing that I would see is that we do need a slight pullback to make this buy valid. You would need like some type of support or a pullback to like a previous low or something like that, right? But let's look at let's look at what the possibility is if this market is going to continue to rise, right? Now, let's ignore that previous low because we know that that's there. Let's ignore where we're at currently. Say this market was to, can, to continue to buy. Well, let me just adjust my resistance just to make sure it's equal. Now, if you look at this, you have, you have one, two, possible three to the possible three up here, which I will give the third time that this market has touched in sequence. And then your fourth will probably be a breakout back to the downside. So yes, this market could, in fact, decide to continue pushing up higher, definitely due to news and what's going on in Europe. You definitely could have a push. That would be the third time. And that would make all the sense in the world to me if it did that. Obviously, you know, you'll have your shallow pullback. Well, let me do this better. This is kind of like the depiction of what it would do, right? See what I'm saying? But we're we're not there yet. Again, what I'm giving you guys is potential is basically hypotheticals. Hypotheticals on what the market may be doing because when you have these areas set up, you're basically you're in putting yourself in position to make money with your eyes closed, right? Because it's like, oh man, I'm glad I had that set up. And you could possibly set an alert like, okay, I look for sales in this area. You know what I'm saying? Try to find the highest point. I look for sales in this area. Gets down here, I look for buys in this area. And if you just see this whole market has definitely been ranging. So nothing is confirming that the trend is uh, 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 bearish besides the last move we have, which is like from 2008. And what happened in 2008 in, in America? Well, that's when everybody 
had their uh, uh, light bulbs go off and was like, oh, snap, we are in a recession. But by then it was too late. You already felt the bunt of it. But guess what? America started recovering, right? I can even go to the dollar and show you guys America started recovering, right? In 2008, we stood down there for a little bit. But then by the time I think 2011 came, where are we at? Yep, you see where we at? 2011. 2011, I think, is when um, Obama said that we're pulling out of Iraq, which obviously brought tremendous, I mean, if you view it that way, uh, value value to the dollar. I would say more so a volume, you know what I'm saying? Volume to the dollar, the value, because that's a topic for another day, guys. But if you believe that any type of fiat currency has value, then we definitely need to have a one-on-one -on -one talk because I'm reading that idea now. There's no such thing as value in fiat money. It's only the interpretation that me and you place on it, which we believe money has value because we place that on there. So don't, don't let me get preaching today. That's not what the class is about. We're just focusing on, you know, uh, uh, chart reading, right? So Euro USD, right? And again, I'm putting myself in the per, in, in the position to win. So because I'm backing out higher time frame, smaller time frame, I can now assess areas that I could potentially see the market falling from. I definitely was looking for the euro to fall, but will we will we continue to fall or will we do a retest? Right. Well, it just depends on what the momentum is showing you at this point. That's where you can start going into the different type of candles, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, what's the momentum like? And base it off of obviously the higher time frame. So four hours, good. Let's see, Hakanashi, strong momentum, right? Strong momentum, not to say that we won't have some type of correction, but very strong momentum. You see how it has like that flat bottom, strong momentum, strong momentum. Currently we have a candle that's open, hasn't closed yet. So we're not sure if like the momentum is slowing down because we have these wicks pushing out or more than likely it's probably like consolidating in order to, to continue. Let's see what it looks like, strong momentum. All right, this is where it starts, you know, basically consolidating and seeing that if the market wants to recover to a lower position, right? So we look at the Euro I would say that more than likely it's just consolidating to continue down. But if we have areas that we're looking for the market to potentially rise up to, which I think the rise will come probably like potentially later this week, you might have an opportunity uh, uh, to buy Euro up. But I think Euro already told us that, you know, I'm pretty much selling here. If I decide to pull back, in my opinion, for a shallow retracement, always got to target a doji again setting yourself up for success. So say say we get in a sell, like obviously I wouldn't get in a sell right now, but say we're selling and the market only sells for like, I don't know, 15, 20 pips, which is still good money. Well, guess what I'm, I'm identifying? I'm identifying an area that the market could retest based off of, well, based off of experience, but more than likely, again, this is consolidation. What is the market attracted to? I always mentioned, if you've been following my calls, consolidation. Now I'm breaking it down even further to show you guys that that is consolidate. Well, everybody should know by now what is consolidation. I mean, a doji is consolidation. Y'all see how the consolidation is showing up more and more, 33. So this is at the point where I'll probably see the clearest point of consolidation right here, where most people will probably be like, well, how do you see that? Okay, let me turn it to a line chart. Uh, that's probably not the best picture. It's a minute. Still not the best picture. There it is right here. So still not, you know, the best form, but that's why I identified it on that higher time frame. If you guys see any doji, everybody should understand that that's consolidation because it's indecisiveness in the market. And it just depends on where that consolidation is being formed. So if you see right here, the market struggling to break. Right here, popped up, faked out, popped down popped up until we broke and we had a little pullback. So this was the pullback. 
identifying that, hey, man, I am, in fact, trying to push down. Now, the only thing we need is for the pop back up in order for us to continue selling this, which, man, I wish I would have caught this this morning, all right? So because I've been using FIBS with consolidation, again, I, I at least gauge the lowest point. If the market, if Euro was to get bullish and we're still looking for sales, right? Your first area would be, would be um, 50%, right? Your next area would be 100% if that wasn't valid. Reason being is because we know sometimes uh, uh, these retracements aren't, you know, deep, they're, they're more shallow, but if you're looking at 100%, that's normally where, towards resistance, right? So if you just split this up and then you drew this out, you would establish that, okay, if the Euro got bullish and I was looking for a sell point at its potential highest point to validate the continuation of its selling, it could be, it, it could be in this price range, or it can be in this price range. We know that it could potentially pop down, pop up in order to just retest the previous low, like at the lowest point, and it'll probably be with where the wick meets, right? Because again, we have resistance right here. See what I'm saying? But either way, you're setting yourself up from areas not to confuse yourself on like what the direction is. You trade the trend until it doesn't show you it's the trend anymore, right? But you also have to establish, like, again, the, the, the laws that govern the market. Like, for instance, what are the three ways the market moves? Up, down, and what most people forget, sideways. You know what I'm saying? So if you factor that into your trading, Understanding that, okay, I'm not going to be perfect, but I can identify areas that the market can put me not necessarily in the right direction, but in the position to win. I shouldn't fall short. You know what I'm saying? Because again, if I see the market getting either too aggressive bullish or too aggressive bears, and I know that this isn't my time to trade, and obviously, guys, trade with the market sessions as well, you know, so you don't be caught with your pants down. But I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at uh, something else fresh, and then I'm going to call it. You can uh you can turn your mic back on too if you want to talk because uh, I'm done with pretty much my class session. I just decided to use Euro USD as my focal point. But let me actually see what we're doing with Euro USD. Slight pullback, like I said. Now, me personally, if I was to get in Euro with this momentum, I would definitely want to see at least a small pullback back to that 09847, only because the move was so aggressive. So what I follow is that the more aggressive the move, the shallow, the, the more shallow the pullback. So when I look, when I think shallow, I think 382. I don't 50% I don't consider shallow. I consider like medium or or exactly what it needs to do, but two, three, eight, three, eight, two, definitely consider uh, uh, shallow. And then if you just mark this whole thing up, that that three, eight, two of this candle puts us at two, three, eight of this entire move. You know what I'm saying? Let me show you guys U.S. oil because I think uh, we are bullish on oil, in my personal opinion. Now, we have a lot of room for oil to uh, uh, continue to push down. So if you see, the market actually did uh, uh, push down, creating what I believe to be is this fake out, because I think that it was just basically trying to find support. So I think overall right here, this is a fake out. Let me annotate it. Now, I'm still bearish on oil. <laughs> I'm still bearish on oil until proven otherwise, right? But if we look at it, this could be a potential fake out. Let me change it.
Man, uh, not gonna lie, shit is heavy. Like the dude was drinking in here. <laughs> like, yo, smells like a drunk. It's crazy. <laughs> It's bad, bro. I don't even over exaggerate about like somebody drinking. So I think this is a fake out right here, right? I think what this was, was to let us know that, hey, this is the direction that I'm trying to head in, but I, I'm obviously gonna have to find support. So if we look at it, we got one, two, push down and then a push up. So to me, we're establishing some type of uh, support in order to bring the market. I'm not sure if we're gonna go all the way back to 82, um, but you know, let's just look at it for, from a FIB standpoint, all right? So it already, it already broke down 382, right? Now let's look at it on a daily time frame. That doesn't scream to me that this market is definitely trying to continue down. Um, until I see, you know, some more clarification. So what I'm thinking is that that we're going to push back up in order to come back down. Now, obviously, the area that I could see it coming back or or continuing to push down would what would be our previous low. You see that? That's our previous low right there, which the market did come up to. It did come up to, and it found it in these wicks, right? to push this market down, but why didn't it continue down? I know we were running into like another market session, but why didn't it just continue to blast and it started creating these wicks at this support structure? Well, the market want to find, must want to find an area or a better area to sell. So this is where I start factoring in my uh, FIB technique. And now, if you stretch it out, because again, even though we identify lows, you got to make sure you're identifying the right low because the market is always searching for basically stop losses, right? It's definitely searching for stop losses, no matter how high you go or how low you buy the market, it's always searching for your stop loss, right? So if we look at, if we look at uh, uh, oil right here, we see that there is consolidation right here. Well, this was a major form of consolidation. Let me box that up. So nobody's confused. I'm gonna turn it. <clears throat> so if we look at it, if we look at where 50% is that, where is 50%? Both of these wicks are previous lows in the market. So if the market came up here and started selling from there, it would be no surprise. Why is that? Because we're coming into 50% of the consolidation. Remember the market breaks these areas and respects what's going on on the other side. So could the market come 100% of this FIB? Absolutely, which would put us where another previous low of consolidation of consolidation so this market can go as high as it wants to what i'm looking at i'm at least gauging that okay at 50 percent sell opportunity potentially right once i get a clarification like a break and a retest then i then i know that that's my selling opportunity it continues to climb given fake outs well my next opportunity would be a hundred percent of this market really you would start right here just because we have this doji but it will probably bypass this 100% because we have a bigger uh, potential move that the market could be attracted to. Either way, you know, you have opportunities to sell and where, again, people get lost in translation is that they just think that the market is going to continue coming down forever, not actually, uh, uh, not actually pull back up. But also, this is consolidation too. So I don't want anybody to like jump the gun, not realizing that this itself is consolidation until we've actually broken out of it. The only thing we can respect is that price will probably come back to its high where the fake out is at or like to where the structure is at and then make a decision from there. You know what I'm saying? So I am bullish on oil right now. I would even say this is a good play to take. Um, let me see if I'm still in it. It looks like a morning star could potentially be presented. 
Yeah, I'm in. I'm in oil right now. I'm at seven seven three one time. Now that's going to be a little bit different based off of like brokers. Based off of brokers, it's going to be a little bit off. But yes, I am currently in um, oil, and normally I do like seventy pips stop losses. So it just depends on what you want to do. Um, obviously, guard your risk. But seventy pips that'll put us right right at this previous low. Now, obviously, I would say you know try it for for the buy. Make sure, like, you know, I wouldn't even, I'll probably have my stop directly below here, but I'm just showing you where 70 pips is or 70 points is in conjunction um, with what I'm looking at. But again, we have areas that the market could potentially rise to, and then we're looking for selling opportunities. So we know that we're not going to stay in this market, you know, for like a hundred pips, a thousand pips, not to mention this is consolidation right here. So I would want to see how far the market travels and then make a decision from there. But I do think that the market is going to blow past this uh, fake out point. It's fake out point. And then um, we'll just look for sales there. So I don't think that this is a, a scenario where oil, well, I, I, I don't know what to think in all honesty, because there's a lot of news surrounding oil, but I don't think this is oil's opportunity to say, hey, man, I'm actually going to blow through the roof. I know there's a lot of talks about oil blowing through the roof, but I mean, to say where we came from, it's like, and with gas being as high as it is, like, I'm not sure if we're going to get that, but there's definitely a strong possibility, right? So I am bullish on oil up into like $80 up until, then the next would be 81 and then the next would be 82. And again, everything's speculative where it's like, okay, if the market does blow through all this, we obviously know that um, what we're looking at is for opportunities for buys. I don't think it's gonna leave this part unchecked, but I do think that it's gonna run away from it only to uh, 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 fill it a little bit later. Because again, just turn it to a line chart, guys, and look based off the high and low of the market or that immediate break where the market retested or what it's positioned at. So this break in the market right here, if I take my Fib, right? Because because that was like a empty space left in the market or a gap in the market, right? I take my Fib, I can see that we are at 618. We're at 618 with the possibility of price rising, then pushing down the finish collecting at, and then, you know, oil will start doing what it's going to do. But like I said, I'm personally in this tie. Um, I like this. I like this buy for the push up. Obviously, you know, catch your, make sure you're at a previous low or, you know, if you want more clarification, wait for structure is broke, but just kind of back test while you're looking at it, right? All right. Mm -hmm. This is like kind of like my basic form of like, wow, I'm looking at to enter a trade. Okay, breakout, breakout here, retest, right? So, okay, that was checked first, right? This previous low, wherever it's at, it was checked in this market right here, right? Mm -hmm. And this is kind of like that staircase concept that I was telling you, right? So, okay. Now do I come to where the market broke out right here? It broke out, previous low retested it, took the market up, right? Let's, mm -hmm. let's do it again. Now I can only go with the information that I have currently. So once we get to this point, now we have to start factoring in where the market may want to reach us. Free, well, previous high. I don't know why I keep seeing, saying previous low. My bad. Previous high. Previous high right here. Or you can constitute this as a break and reach us to create support. Let me see if there's a whip down there. <laughs> no nope. previous high on the money previous high on the money right mm -hmm. okay so let's go let's go to the next one now if you if you look what i'm doing is i'm finding the areas where the market jumped out and then pulled back to so right here right here specifically let's actually change that to a different color that was a previous high, like a previous resistance that it broke out of. And then it respected that versus like just being a previous high in the uptrend of that uh, uh, time frame. Uh, let's do green. No, we already have green. 
Let's do that, right? So boom. And what I'm what I'm counting is is this move right here from 20 from what is what's today? The 25th? Yeah, from today at two at 425 to 460, right? Consolidation, consolidation right here. If you break it down to like a one minute or a three minute chart, right? Okay, so we broke up out of that. Now, if I if I extend this, is there a possibility for price to retest this? Absolutely, especially if we haven't had no um, you know, no pullback into that consolidation zone. What am I looking for? Oh, hmm. consolidation right here. Another previous high, the market did break up out of this, retest it, and push up, right? So currently, we're validated for bullet for, for being bullish. We're validated for being bullish, but you have to have your eyes open to the possibility of what? Because again, this is chart reading, guys. Possibility of this market wanting to retest inside this consolidation zone, which would still line up with that with this uh, 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 green zone right here. I mean, turquoise zone, and then that could potentially be your buy your buy zone from there if the market started to pull back from there. So you see that? So um, yeah, as far as I'm seeing right now, I am currently bullish on oil. Uh, I would like to see a pullback in that consolidation zone, but it just depends on when it wants to do that. It could hit this zone up here and then come back to that consolidation. But again, it's more so of identifying what, where the market could return back to at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And even if we're like, Price action should be giving us a bull move, but we know that once we're done collecting our pips, we should be looking for opportunities for the market to return back here. So you shouldn't be like confused if you see an area that the market pulls back and not so nervous on your trade because it's like, well, I identified that zone, but price action was showing me something different. So either I close the trade because I may be in drawdown, but or maybe I made profit and it gives me an even lower opportunity to enter the market or a higher opportunity to enter the market. So that's it for me, guys. Um, I'm going to stay on a little bit, Ty, but everybody else, man, on YouTube, man, appreciate you guys as always, man. Y'all can catch me tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern on YouTube Live. If you're looking for a community, like I always say, and I'm going to start putting it in my description, if you're looking for a community, uh, whether you're an advanced trader, new trader, OG, definitely need some OGs that can assist in the business. Um, guys, reach out to me on Instagram at CEO underscore digital goats. That is CEO underscore digital goats. We can have a conversation for me. My platform is free, but we are going to pay. Oh, no. What's going on? Uh, hey, when that does, that. there we go. We are going to paid services on June 1st, 2023. That is June 1st, 2023. So again, guys, appreciate y'all. Make sure you hit that notification. I mean, make sure you hit that subscribe button on your way out the door, guys. Hit that like button. Make sure you comment if you want to see anything. Give me some updates on my progress, whether it's garbage, whether you loved it. Either way, guys, I appreciate the feedback. Hit that notification bell so you stay up to date on all my content. And as always, guys, we're at the top, but I promise you, we're taking everybody to the top with us in 2023. Appreciate you guys. See y'all tomorrow.